Hey guys, so um, I recently had to make a story for my humanities class and I thought, um, you know, since I've uploaded a recite of a poem that the present and a um, William Shakespeare sonnet, that I thought I would present a short story to you guys. So um, it's a little longer and uh, it's only three pages. And I just thought, hey, I would like to uh, let some people that didn't get to hear it presented in class, maybe to get a chance to hear it now. Um, so, yeah. Uh, without further ado, let's read my original story, Hotel Isolation. It was a cool Friday night. Tim, a businessman who had been working in his profession for over 20 years, has just left his office. With his white hair and mustache, he looks to be around the age of 50. Tim strolls toward his 1943 Rolls Royce with a briefcase at his side. There's a slight breeze that pushes against his overcoat as he walks down 3rd Street. Underneath the street lamp, his Rolls Royce illuminates in the dark. Tim pulls his keys out of his dress pants and unlocks the car door. Setting his briefcase in the back seat, he gets in the car and starts it. Tim pulls out his pocket watch and checks the time. It is late. Tim lives an hour away from his office. Feeling much too exhausted to drive that far, he decides to stay at a hotel instead. Driving down the streets of New Haven, Tim looks for a hotel. After driving down a few blocks, he eventually finds a hotel that matches his interest. Hotel Isolation. Tim liked to call it that. The hotel looks very nice and exquisite. It looks to have at least four floors and 20 rooms on each floor. It would be able to house plenty of people, but during these times, a very slim amount of people rented a hotel room. Tim pulls it to the parking lot and parks close to the side of the building. After locking his rolls, he steps into the front entrance of the hotel. Upon entering, Tim scans the lobby. On the back of the wall, a paint a painting of mountains is placed over six gray sofa chairs, evenly spaced and across from each other. Sitting underneath the painting was a middle-aged woman wearing a bright red dress with a black overcoat and hat. A brown feather sticks out on the top of her hat. Opposite her sits a young blonde-haired woman that is reading a book. On the left of the chairs is a tall brown glass cabinet. On the right side is, a, is the brown front desk, decorated with detailed pillars. The walls are painted white and brown. The white floor has a thick brown line that is parallel to the perimeter of the room. Behind the front desk is a doorway to the dining room, which must have been closed due to the lights being turned off. Tim approaches the front desk and rings the bell. He waits for a response. No one answers. Tim checks his watch. Feeling the heat from the furnace, he takes off his overcoat and folds it over his right arm. After waiting a couple minutes, he turns and faces the woman. Tim chuckles as he asks the middle-aged lady if anyone works here. The older lady says that they are currently preparing the hotel for the morning. Tim nods and begins to observe the brown cabinet on the other side of the room. The middle-aged lady kept sitting Tim. Feeling a little uncomfortable, Tim asks her if there's anything wrong. The woman explained to him that she is simply interested in what people do for a living during these times. Tim responds with an O, oh, and he reluctantly explains to the woman his profession and what he does. The woman, remaining stern, listened to what he says. She continuously asks him questions about his life, like if he was married or had children. Tim answered her questions, which were mostly with a no. The blonde-haired lady flipped to the next page in her book. After telling the older woman about himself, Tim asked what she does. She introduced herself as Frida, and explained that her job involves constantly moving. Frida was a popular artist, began in her 20s, who became very successful and is currently living off the money she acquired. She traveled many times to become inspired to work on another painting. Frida seemed to have changed into a stiff and snobby woman since she was rejected from having her work shown in a Chicago museum. Once the two elders were acquainted, their attention turned to the young blonde woman across from them. Tim starts the conversation by asking her what her book is about. 
She describes her book as a story about a non-conforming man who views his life in a negative perspective. The title of her book was The Stranger. The young woman, her name was Alice, explained to the two that she was going to be the first female in her family to continue her education after high school. Frida, very impressed, told her that she was proud of her choice. Alice just smiled and thanked them. A few moments later, the clerk emerged from the back room. Tim took a few steps toward the counter and asked for a room. The clerk si signed him in and handed him a room key. Tim looked back at the woman and wished them the best. Outside the hotel, the streets are quiet. Hardly any sound is heard, especially in this part of the city. It is like a force field. The noise from the rest of the city cannot interrupt the peace that the hotel provides. Much like the three adults in the hotel room, it correlates with the other buildings, but stands independently. Tim reaches his room and unlocks the door. He is finally able to rest and be alone again in his dreams. Thank you.